um, CEO Congress is actually um, a sister Congress to the um, EMU Congress. Um, EMU Congress has been conducted um, sub, uh, five times. Um, they, we conducted two of the EMU Congress in um, North Cyprus. And at the same time, we also conducted one of the conferences in Cappadocia. And then um, the other EMU Congress also conducted in uh, Istanbul Nishan Tashi University. And um, the last EMU Congress actually was conducted in uh, Ma uh, Macedonia in Gostivar. And um, like I said earlier on, the CEO Congress, it's actually um, a sister Congress to the EMU Congress. So therefore, I would, like to thank, I would like to thank you all for actually participating in this Congress. And also, I would like to welcome you all. And I also like to uh, wish you a pleasant and um, a happy Congress. Um, the CEO Congress actually um, em uh, entails participants from about 29 countries. And um, so uh, now we will also like to invite um, our Associate Professor Elira to do Beva uh, from the American University of Central Asia. Uh, hi, uh, hi, uh, hi, everyone. I, um, I, I'm glad to participate at this conference and thank you very much for organizers. Uh, can I share my screen? Yes, we should be able to do so. Uh, yes, uh, can you see my uh, yeah. presentation? Yes, we can see it. Yes, let me do. Uh, yes, uh, I would like uh, to talk about uh, COVID-19 misinformation on social media in Central Asia. Uh, so, uh, like in, in, in uh, other countries in the world, um, there were a lot of misinformation on social media about COVID-19. As World Health Organization called this misinformation about uh, the coronavirus, a massive infodemic. Uh, so this massive infodemic uh, happened in uh, uh, Kyrgyzstan, in Kazakhstan, in all Central Asian countries also, especially through social media. Uh, so uh, as internet usage here is high internet penetration and people are mostly using uh, through uh, a mobile internet. Uh, even highly mountainous places, they have internet access and they are getting information about COVID-19 through social media. Uh, so uh, uh, in uh, uh, many Central Asian countries, they use uh, uh, Russian language platforms uh, like Adnaklasniki, like uh, uh, Vkontakte, uh, and also Facebook and Instagram. So Instagram is number one. Uh, uh, information platform and also WhatsApp, Telegram are also uh, interpersonal communication channels people are using heavily and spreading and sharing information, fake news uh, about uh, COVID-19. So uh, there were a lot of rumors and conspiracy theories uh, and health information about COVID-19 uh, and it spread wild, wildly on social media. So false claims have ranged from bogus cures for, uh, for um, uh, misinformation linking the virus co with conspiracy theories on 5G mobile phone technology or high profile figures such as Microsoft's Bill Gates. So uh, wearing masks was also another, another uh, myth around COVID-19 and also that virus was a weaponized uh, war between China and other huge uh, uh, empires uh, that they have invented it uh, or uh, like vodka or garlic uh, heals COVID-19 and people started drinking vodka in order to protect them themselves. So uh, the pandemic has been accompanied by infodemic uh, uh, of nonsense, disinformation, half truths, fake news, and conspiracy theories. And it, this is was this was also dangerous, as dangerous as COVID-19. Uh, so uh, it happened also in other uh, parts of the world, like in London, in UK, people started burning 5G, uh, 5G uh, stations and cables. Uh, so uh, th this uh, uh, happened also in other countries. Uh, so uh, this uh, the spread of a virus uh, was also as 
dramatic as the spread of uh, fake news and misinformation. Uh, so uh, this uh, conspiracy theory around uh, 5G, cons uh, 5G, that 5G is spreading virus. In Kyrgyzstan also people started burning uh, 5G towers. Uh, and uh, uh, so some people have taken this conspiracy theory very seriously. Uh, so, uh, uh, and uh, this uh, disinformation and misinformation uh, uh, was a huge threat for governments who were dealing uh, how to uh, stop the spread of a virus. Uh, so people uh, started believing in this kind of uh, fake uh, news and fake accounts. What about uh, social media like Twitter? Twitter also started uh, spreading uh, misinformation about uh, COVID-19 uh, uh, through uh, bots. So these uh, social bots, uh, they were spreading by amplifying these misleading messages and also number of uh, tweets or retweets sharing uh, this misleading fake news about pandemic and th they got also as much uh, as a massive audience as new york times article uh, so uh, this, uh, uh, some of these bots uh, sharing the links directly and other bots uh, who are uh, doing coordinated actions online, retweeting, tweeting, all of these fake news, uh, uh, they were detected by recent research by Young et al. And this uh, uh, low credibility websites, how they spread information online, especially through social media. And also there were a lot of trolley farms uh, who are mostly used also by political parties, by candidates for presidency and for parliamentary elections. Uh, usually these trolley farms, they uh, create fake accounts. Sometimes one person creates up to 200 fake accounts on Facebook and manages to share all this information, fake, fake information. So often fakes, they have empty pages, so there are no publications, photos, and, and they are uh, loaded, all of this information loaded in one day. And then they use the image generated by artificial intelligence. And how these fakes are uh, doing coordinated actions online, how these bots are making friends with each other, sharing each other's uh, content and actively liking, commenting each other in order to, to, uh, to, uh, to create the amplification of messages online so that they would look real. Uh, so uh, how to differentiate whether this is a fake or a real human being or bot or a human being? So th there are a lot of uh, computer programming uh, like bot slayer, botometer, uh, this hoaxy, so which were developed by uh, Indiana University in US and they can detect bots. So this is an example of a bot. Uh, this is Mahabat Talantseva. She writes that uh, she is from Yekaterinburg, from Russia. However, uh, she the the photo here is the photo of a Russian deputy of Russian Duma, Marina Mukanbetova. So this kind of uh, bo uh, fake fakes, they use the photos of celebrities, uh, fashion models, or deputies, or sports stars. Uh, and mostly uh, uh, fake accounts in Kyrgyzstan segment of social network, they use uh, photos of Buryatia or Mongol or Huluk Asian or Kazakhstan or uh, uh, in Russia also a lot of migrants, they use uh, uh, people's photos from Russia. So uh, uh, these uh, boats, they are, uh, they turn the business and they are earning a lot of money uh, by doing propaganda uh, for political uh, candidates, especially during elections. And, uh, and during COVID-19, there were a lot of fakes uh, also uh, spread by these fake accounts. And uh, this, uh, there were uh, rumors about uh, different things like cats are also vulnerable animals to COVID-19. Tuberculosis vaccine reduces the level of infection. Ga ginger, onion, garlic and other medicines for coronavirus and disinfection from helicopters that in Almaty in Kazakhstan at uh, 11 p.m. there was a uh, helicopters flying over Almaty city and uh, they were 
uh, spraying medicine on Almaty. So this kind of message was spread uh, uh, through WhatsApp groups and through Telegram. Uh, that uh, also 5G kills birds and also spreads uh, COVID-19. Uh, so this was another conspiracy theory. Uh, and uh, so this uh, uh, also fakes about vitamin C, alcohol, uh, and uh, uh, different types of uh, fakes which was spread uh, in, in uh, Central Asia. Uh, so how to track this misinformation? Yeah, how to detect these bots? Uh, so awesome, uh, this uh, observatory for social media, they developed uh, Hoxi, which helps users to visualize these bots and to detect these bots. And Botometer rates on Twitter users who is bot and who is human. So it's all open access and it's all uh, for free. Everyone can use it. Uh, and also bot slayer. So they also uh, ha used hashtag COVID-19 on Twitter to look, to visualize all this data in interactive network graph and to uh, detect all these bots around COVID-19. As you can see from this graph, uh, they used this hashtag China, hashtag COVID-19 and all of these uh, hashtags they have uh, used in order to detect bots who are spreading uh, misinformation and fake, fake information, fake news about COVID-19. Uh, so um, on Twitter, it was a hugely massively uh, uh, spread and the tracking disinformation is not easy uh, because uh, still uh, humans have to decide whether it's a bot or a human, yeah, in order to uh, track these bots, uh, uh, the usage of this uh, uh, software is not enough. There should be also human inter intervention to map, to analyze information on social media platforms. So this is, uh, uh, I tried to use Hoxie uh, through the hashtag Kyrgyzstan. Uh, and uh, here, as you can see, uh, the red dots are bots. So uh, how these uh, bots are interacting with uh, humans and spreading information and the coordinated actions you can visualize and see uh, this is the graph uh, where uh, red is a bot and, and the blue is human, bot-like or human-like. Uh, here two bots and here 13 bots uh, I have detected. And, and then uh, you can uh, further look at the profile of these bots. What kind of posts they're spreading, uh, whom they are commenting, liking or retweeting and sharing and etc. Uh, so uh, how to tackle this misinformation worldwide? As you can see in US also Canon and other misinformation uh, a fake, a fake news was a huge issue, especially during presidential elections and in Europe also. Uh, these uh, trolley farms and bots, especially, uh, who are suspicious to be Russian originated. Yeah. Uh, so these uh, bots and trolley farms, in order to tackle this misinformation, and the platforms themselves, social media can do flagging or if they know a source is low credibility, they can do something to reduce the exposure or media literacy to uh, educate people, masses, uh, uh, to teach them media literacy, how to be critical thinkers, uh, how to analyze information, how to do fact checking and how to do information verification for a beginning from kindergarten until university. And all uh, people, uh, even parents, must be educated uh, in order to do fact-checking and how to uh, uh, be critical thinkers. Uh, so uh, we need this massive media literacy programs. Thank you very much. Okay, thank you very much, Astrid Professor um, uh, Elira.